this video we're going to be looking at how to make this really nice procedural rust material just using PBR Painter. So this is how it looks at the end and I'm going to go through the process to create something like this one step at a time to show exactly how to achieve this kind of effect. Okay so let's make a start. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete this folder which has got my rust in it and I'm going to start from scratch and build that material back up again. Okay so I'm starting with a metal that looks something like this. And this is just a basic set of PBR textures that I've downloaded and I'll put a link to that metal in the video description. But the main point of the video is the procedural rust, so you can use whatever metal base that you want based on your specific use case. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new layer and this is going to be my rust base. And this is going to have most of that procedural rust effect. Alright, so the first thing that I'm going to do with this layer is I'm actually going to set up the mask. So I'm going to go into masks create a new mask and I'm going to find inside this smart mask category I'm going to get the rust mask which is basically set up for this exact kind of material. So when I add that mask I can preview it and as you can see this mask is basically designed to give that kind of rough noise effect across the whole model while also filling in the cavities and it does that using an ambient occlusion node. And within the panel over here we can change things like the coverage of that mask the intensity, or we can choose how much of the crevices we want to fill. So rust tends to accumulate in crevices because water accumulates in crevices. So we can get a really realistic effect by really filling in these crevices like this. So these are the main three tools that you'll use for this kind of mask. The other ones are just adjusting the settings specific to the noise and some ambient occlusion settings as well. So now that I've added my mask, I'm going to turn off the preview, close up this tab for now, and I'm going to start adding individual channels. So for a start, I'm going to need a color. And as you can see, now that I've got the mask on there, it's just adding this white color to all of those masked areas. And what I want to do is I want to set up a procedural color that's going to capture those really nice rust colors. And there's a few ways that I could do that. I could use a rust texture, so actually a PBR texture that's going to give me a rust effect. But I want to do this procedurally, so I'm going to use a different approach I could use a procedural type and just make a specific noise node do this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something called link to masks. And what this one does is it links the color to the mask. So if we have another look at the mask, the mask goes from white all the way through to black. And that color determines the color of this output. So by default, it's just directly mapped to the color. So it's exactly the same map as that mask. But what we can do is we can use a color ramp in this. And now we can choose how to map those grayscale values to new colors. So for this first color, I'm going to change this one from black to a kind of dark reddy browny color. And I think something like that looks pretty good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this up so it actually can see that color really start to appear on the mesh. So one thing we can do to make it easy to see what's going on is we can change the view mode from material to single channel. And now what this is doing is it's just showing the color channel. So you can now see if we start to drag this in you can see how that color is now starting to populate those areas of the mask in there like that. So now I'm going to do the second color and for this one I'm going to do something a little bit darker I think. So this is basically just a process of choosing whichever colors that you like um, for your specific rust effect. So obviously there's no right or wrong answer here, it's just depending on the, the desired color that you're going for. So I think that looks pretty cool. And I'm going to actually add another one in here because it looks quite nice having three different colors. And for this last one, I'm going to put it at the very end. And I'm actually going to give it a kind of brightish orangey color. And then I basically want to just move that until I can kind of see that one popping in. So we might want to move these across a bit. So now it's just a matter of getting the kind of distribution of colors right. And at this point, you probably don't want to spend too much time on this because you can tune this up later once you have the overall effect visible. So I think something like that's probably fine. I might make this a little bit brighter. Things are going to look a little bit different once we have the normals and the metallic and whatnot in as well. So we might just leave that as it is for now. So as you can see, that's really starting to come together now because we've got these nice rust looking colors just using this procedural setup. So now I'm going to turn on the metallic channel. And as you can see, because we're viewing the single channel, it's now swapped just to the metallic view. And for this one, I'm not actually going to do anything because basically all I want to do is set the metallic to zero because the rust is going to have a metallic of zero. 
and you can kind of see that that's already doing that by just setting this as a constant value. Now I'm going to turn on the roughness and again I'm going to leave it constant because it's not too important to have this one varying. I can just have this as a constant high-ish value so higher than the metal underneath to make it a bit rougher looking. Now the last one that's important is the normals and this is going to basically let me bump the rust out of the surface. So the only thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to turn on layer bump. And as you can see by looking at this normal channel, that's basically just now bumping out of the surface. And then we can adjust the strength and the distance later on. So now that I've got that set up, I'm going to go back to the material view. And now you can see that this is really coming together because now we're getting closer to that effect that I showed at the start of the video. So we've got this nice color distribution and we've got this rough kind of bumpy looking rust sticking out of the material. At this point, if you're working in cycles and you want to actually displace the mesh, you can also turn on the height, which is what I'm going to do because that adds a really nice effect. When you first do that, you're going to get something like this because the scale is far too big. So I'm going to drop this down to something like 0.01, which looks pretty nice. So you can really see the difference adding that displacement. When we turn that off, we kind of lose all that bumping. Adding it really brings out that really crusty look to the rust. All right, so at this point, it actually looks pretty good. So you might be happy with that. We can make a few adjustments to really refine the look. So the one thing we can do is we can adjust this multiplier in here. And this is going to basically, for every single channel individually, it's going to bring up the intensities of those channels. So for example, if I increase the color multiplier, it really adds a more solid color, which looks a little bit more realistic. So I can bring that up to something like that. And now we can kind of really see those colors coming through. And you can do this again with the metallic, just to make sure that the rust regions are really getting that metallic of zero. And then the same again with the roughness. And again, this is kind of just trial and error to really get the result that looks nice for your particular use case. In terms of the normals, we can also multiply them. And depending on how intense you want it to look, you may want to do that. But I think for a start, usually the normals are fairly bumpy just straight up so you don't usually need to touch that one and then of course you can adjust the height if you want to change that scale as well so we can put this up to something like 0.015 if you want to bump it out a bit more and this is then going to depend on how exactly you're doing that bumping are you using just bumping or are you displacing the mesh in which case you want to make sure you've got enough vertices to actually make that displacement look nice. And that's the basic effect. One thing I really like is that the color is actually linked to the mask, which means that you get these kind of correlation between the mask area and the color. So you kind of get different colors as you move outwards from the center of the rust, which you can kind of see if we look close up. But something that's also nice is to actually have a bit of random color splashed over the top as well. And I'm going to do this by adding another layer. In this case, I'm going to call this one Rust Color Correction. And all I'm going to do in this layer is I'm just going to add some extra color and I'm going to add a procedural color that's going to kind of blend into that existing color. And to do this, I'm going to make this one procedural and I'm going to leave it as this noise. And again, to do this, I'm going to change the view to the channel so I can just see this one. And as you can see, this has basically just replaced all the stuff underneath, so we can address that later. But right now, I'm just going to get this effect right. So I'm going to increase the detail and the roughness to make it a bit more like that rust look. Something like that. And I might leave the scale as it is. I can adjust that later. And now all I need to do is just use a color ramp to, again, pick some other colors to randomly distribute over the surface. So I'm going to speed this up in the video, and all I'm going to do is just do the same thing I did previously and just pick some different colors now to really add some different effects to that rust. Okay, so I've picked a few colors. I'm not going to spend any more time on this because I want to actually see how it blends first. And so the next thing I'm going to do is just turn this one to material view again. And now, as you can see, a bit of a problem. The color is now covering everything, even the areas that are not rust. So the way to get around this is to add a mask again. And we're not going to add a new rust mask because that's going to mean that it's not actually connected to this one. What we're going to do is add a layer mask. And this is basically going to pull whatever the masks are in here. It's going to pull it into this current layer. So as you can see now it's masking it in the exact same way as this layer did. And that looks quite nice, but what I'm going to do is now adjust this opacity to blend between this color and this one. So if I put that down at 0.5, it's just getting half of the other layer and half of this layer. And so with that set up, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spend 
little bit of time just playing around with this color ramp and trying out some different colors. And again, I'm going to speed up the video because this part is just purely personal preference and I definitely encourage you to have a go yourself. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's looking really nice. If we just have a look at the, the single channel, this is the range of colors. So that's a really cool effect, I think, because what we're doing is we're getting some colors that are coming through that are kind of attached to the, the mask as well. And then we've got these colors on the top that are just randomly scattered across the mesh. You can obviously change the multiplier on this one as well, so you can make that more intense or less intense, but I think it actually looks quite good as it is. So let's swap back to material now. And I think I'm pretty happy, so I think I'm going to leave it there in terms of the colors. But the main point of this is to actually create a base Rust material that then you can save to the asset browser and just reuse it however you want. And the great thing about it being procedural is that you can obviously change these colors every single time you use it. So you might want a particularly dark and dull Rust in a particular model, or you might want to make it more vibrant for something else. And the other cool thing is that we can obviously just adjust now with this one layer, we can just adjust things like the coverage. So we can kind of make it go everywhere if we want, or we can just make it kind of just in the crevices like that. And you can adjust the intensity and everything else can be adjusted and it will all kind of propagate through to this other layer and generate for you this procedural rust. And also if you save it like this without doing any kind of baking, this crevice fill will be a kind of smart mask that then fills any crevice of any mesh that you apply this to. So that's really, really valuable to have something like this within your assets. All right, so that's the basic tutorial. One more thing I'll show before I wrap up is that because this crevice filling is using an ambient occlusion node, there is this option down here to turn on or off this local AO. And when that's off, which is off by default, what's kind of cool is that if you have more than one model next to each other like this, if we have a look at the mask, it's actually generating that ambient occlusion mask based on the interaction between these two models. So that's really useful if you want to have this rust appearing at the kind of interface between these two different things. And if you haven't watched my tutorial on the asset browser, I definitely recommend you do that so that you can then save something like this for reuse in your later projects. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you got something from it and I hope you can use this in your own projects. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in another video. Cheers.